And we're back on the Gamer Feed Weekly, <laughs> episode two, with uh, your host Carlos Macias. And of course, Nick Simberg is on the mic as well this week. Hello. Yeah. And actually, we have a special guest this week, uh, Mr. Ben Patton, who. Uh, Hello. Hello. That's, uh, that's www.gamejournals are also. Uh, Gamejournals.com, which has a longer name that I guess I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> we try to keep it PG 13 rated, but there's an F word in there, though, there I is, guess. Is there something you can replace it with, uh, I guess? Game journalists are incompetent F wits. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. Do. Perfect. Just that like K Rock. That'll uh, get us through iTunes without a, without a hitch. Yes. Should you don't have to have the uh, explicit. The explicit hey, content tag. That's we're, good. we're doing okay. We're, we're family friendly. We're doing okay, I believe. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, so I brought you guys together for uh, the conversation about video games, sure. if that's okay with you guys. Well, you've um, spent so much time <laughs> setting up the equipment. I guess we kind of whether we, we did want take to a while. or not. It, we're yeah, I think it to took. Now. I think it took more time to set up this equipment and to get the the pre munchies or what were we talking the about prunchies, the, the yes. prunchies out of the way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because we're celebrating. There's another guy in the in the studio, I guess, in the apartment that he just he, we're celebrating. He just got his medical marijuana uh, medical marijuana license, and he actually found out he's like in the center. It's the American dream of, of of what is it? What are they called? Dispensaries. Yeah, there's Middle a lot dispensary. of dispensaries in this yeah, particular. So area. He's he's really happy about that. Yeah. Um, but mm, I don't know. What do we start with? I actually I read an article probably like a few weeks ago by Dennis Gameka, which he he For talked bit, about Bitmob. No, he he's been at Bitmob. He's everywhere. He's been at Bitmob. Sorry if I uh, mispronounced his last name. I'm not sure. I saw him at right uh, I saw him at Gamer Limit for a while there too. That's where I used to start. Oh, that's right. I think you guys were. Day. You guys might have been friends for a while there. No, you guys didn't know each other. No. No. Nick Being doesn't have friends. I have no friends. I just you use have, people. You have us, I guess. A are kind we, of. Are we friends, Carlos? I would say don't, we're not that good. Of don't friends. don't really tell him that. <laughs> don't say you're friends. He will borrow money and never pay it back. Ben so that's, a, that's how your friends work. Ben Nick? owes me two hundred dollars. Can we edit that out of the podcast, please? <laughs> We're leaving it in. Oh, anyway, like Dan, Dennis, Dennis wrote an interesting story about kind of like the whole safe system and L.A. Noir and Heavy Rain. You guys are just giving each other uh, some mad and mean glare right I'll, now. I'll punch him in the neck when we're done. Don't worry, that will even things out. There's your 200 bucks. Anyway, L.A. Noir and uh, Heavy Rain. Yeah, L.A. Noir. So he talked to... <laughs> So he kind of talked about uh, the save system in that game. Uh, if you guys have played it, right, it kind of it saves automatically, and there's no real way to replay it. You can yeah. replay some of the cases and all that, but it's you got to replay it like right from the start. Yeah. So you got to go back. And he talked about some of it. He I, he made an analogy to uh, maybe like the choose your own adventure books. Yeah. Where you would go in and read and maybe thumb through the pages and keep your thumb there and move to another page and kind of you have the choice. To move around the experience how you want, and L.A. Noir kind of doesn't do that. So yeah. he, I think he made an argument for, like, maybe gamers should have the option to kind of save as you will, you know, yeah. instead of the... But uh, I don't know. What do you guys think of it? You, Nick, you haven't played it, right? But I played Heavy Rain. Okay. I, I, we're about... <laughs> well, ben has something what? to say. It's, it's his yeah. turn. Ben has played Heavy Rain. I, I played the demo for Heavy Rain, but I've, uh, I have L.A. Noir, and I'm about a third of the way through Disc mm. 2, and the save system has been... Uh, a real point of consternation for me. It's been a a, a real sort of pain in the ass mm. because it does. It's like if you want to restart, you have to start from from the from the case you're on. And if you finish a case and you get like you know one of the cases we've just done has a bad result, and because mm. my girlfriend and I are playing it together, we got the 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 least best result, and we wanted mm. to redo that case, and the game wouldn't let us because <laughs> mm-hmm. it's like well we're already on the next case now, so suck it. Yeah, yeah it just it, seems it just seems to be punishing the player. Yeah. You made it sound well, like it was your girlfriend's fault. It was it's like, well, no, because no, I was no. playing with my girlfriend. No, no. <laughs> El- we got the least best result. We got the least best result. Because <laughs> I was playing with my girlfriend. Well, I, you know, I think, I, for me, I think the argument, I think I made, I made it to Dennis too, that it, for me it was it was more like I, I kind of go for the, whatever the director wants to do, you know. If he believes that the experience is, like, you, we're going to save whenever we want, we're going to kind of push you through this experience. And for me, it was more like maybe the director taking charge, you know, maybe like in a movie where you don't really have a choice how it pans out. But yeah, I think uh, I don't know. I mean, there's a huge difference between a movie, which is a linear narrative that takes you from A to B to C mm-hmm. and a video game where the narrative uh, has the potential to kind of just kind of splinter off into, you know, onto these little roots and trees that, that could take you down different paths. And mm-hmm. I think the problem with L.A. Noir um, as a. Uh, technologically innovative as it is is it's it's very on rails you know mm. you really you're 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 only ever at any given point given three options for anything so mm. the the uh the available options to branch off are extremely limited and they always come back to you know to uh 
to one or two or occasionally three mm. different outcomes. Well, I, yeah, I think for me, the that is the issue with it, though. Yeah. Like, I kind of would like it for it to be kind of a director's vision. But at the same time, they give you, like, you just got this question wrong. You're, and then the next one you got wrong. And then, like, you actually are getting results immediately afterwards and at the end of the yeah. case. So it's not really narrative yeah. experience. So it's kind of it's kind of trying to live in two worlds, you know, at the same time where it's like, hey, look, we're trying to give you this story and it's case by case and it's kind of episodic without necessarily well, being... I have, I have a huge problem with L.A. Noir because you'll finish a case. Like I said, the case I got where I got the, the, the bad outcome where we uh, convicted the wrong guy mm. uh, and, you know, the, the, the chief of police or whoever it was said, ah, you did the wrong thing. You're, on, you know, you're off the case, you're off this case and that case and you can wander the streets for a bit until mm. you're back in my good graces. And then immediately at the start of the next chapter... You know, he's saying, "Oh, I was just talking to this chap here about how oh, he didn't say chap because he's American." I was talking about this guy here about how you know how great you guys are doing and how mm. how, how good your progress is. And unless he was being incredibly sarcastic, yeah. uh, it just there's there's no um, you know cohesiveness within the. the well, the, I, the I think I game. think that's the issue sometimes that you can play the case however you want. You can get all the answers wrong, and maybe there's like maybe one or two cases where like you could charge the wrong guy or yeah. charge some other guy. But otherwise, every single case is going to end exactly how it's going to end, regardless of how many questions you got yeah. wrong or if you got to. There's there's some interesting parts. There's one case where it's like if you get to uh, like a break in on time, you can catch them in the act or kind of. But it's really, like, so few and far between. It's like a 20-hour game, too. So it's like, you know, when your actions don't really matter and they make a safe system where it's like, look, your actions matter, but wait a minute, they really don't because I can do whatever I want and at the end of it, it's going to be the same result. This kind of makes me think of uh, Fallout 3 where because you could save anywhere, like I would save right before I blew up the nuke and destroyed the whole town. I can't can't destroy that town. I can't can't do it. I just feel bad. I hate people. I know but, I'm, but I mean, it gives you the option, right? Fallout yeah. there gives you the option but, where but it's like you get that see, satisfaction. Because, because there's this, the like the save anywhere thing, mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't force you to continue with a pa- particular path for an hour if you don't like it. Mm-hmm. Like in the uh, sounds like L.A. Noir or in Heavy Rain, you had to finish the chapter yeah. regardless of how well and you I, did, I, unless I, you wanted to like exit the game, start I, over. But in Fallout, if you don't yeah. like it, you can just like, well, I blew it up and I feel bad about that, so I'll just reload. <laughs> And yeah. do the other thing. Yeah, so that is a closer to the choose your own adventure kind of. You have your, you can just keep going through it, maybe save a couple of times along the way or whatever, but also kind of go back and, and make new choices or go a different route. But I think uh, the one that did do it right was Heavy Rain, though. Heavy Rain, I think, did do it correctly. I don't know what you guys think about it, but I thought it was very much the director's vision and it's going to go, but you're actually, your actions do have an impact in the story. Yeah. Like there's, what, 22 endings in that game and there's like things will go differently. People can die and yeah. you can get to the end like a completely different ending. And I think that one worked a little bit better. Eleanor, I think they were a little too focused on, but look at their faces. Look what, look, yeah, that guy, it's, you it's can see really, him flinching. This is you the really see. weird thing because their faces are so well animated, but then they've got standard kind of video game sort of mocap for the bodies and they look like kind of ragdolls. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just well, it's really jarring, especially when you've got a female character who's wearing like uh, a dress that comes up to the shoulder line mm. and then a pearl, you know, a necklace or something. And then don't you dare smirk at the words pearl necklace. <laughs> um, and. <laughs> And then you can see, you know, when 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 her head is being animated because it's the cap, you know, it's a different form of mocap from from the body. Mm. You see all this sort of muscle movement on the neck, and then below the the necklace, there's nothing. It's like she's dead. Well, I, I don't know if you've got into this case, but there's one case in particular where it really stands out how. They don't, they, the body animated, I guess, isn't well, but the faces are really good. There's one part actually where there's two little girls. I don't know if you got into this case. So you go to this one guy's house and he's like with his daughter. So he's like, you guys go to the other room. And the the girls' face are not animated or anything. They look like the blockiest like pieces yeah. of crap you see in the, in the whole game. It's like, you can really tell like what did they focus on. And I think they might have taken that, I don't know, to an extreme. Yeah. And they're like, Maybe they could have stepped back a little. I mean, they worked on the game for six years, though, so yeah, it's kind of like you, you wonder they could have hey, done better hey, on that. They worked on Duke Nukem Forever for 14 years. <laughs> and look how great that turned out. And but I mean, but, but nobody the thing in is, that game is even I, animated. I, I have, I have see, the main problem I have with L.A. Noire is as fantastic as the, uh, the mocap was for the, 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 the facial animation technology that they used, hmm. uh, as, as fantastic as that was, all it does is highlight how bad... The rest of the game looked, you know, uh-huh. and especially when uh-huh. because they mocap the actors sort of they have to look straight on and they can't turn their heads. When you mm-hmm. do have uh, an act, uh, a character in the game who turns their head, you don't get any of you know when I'm when I'm t- when I turn my head sideways like that, you get that that one that you know that neck muscle and you know whatever this is a jugular or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I'm not great with anatomy clearly, <laughs> uh, 
but you don't get that in the game because what they've done, all they've done is they've taken the character model head and then just twisted it. So they've just all, all that happens is the polygons get twisted, and you don't get any of that that muscle movement, which is it's very jarring when you see it because yeah. it looks like someone's head's just been you know twisted. Mm. And and all again, all that does is is serve to prove how bad you know motion capture technology. So have you have you been have you been having a good experience though so far with the game? Um, as far apart from like the technical glitches and maybe like it, has it been pulling you along? It's like I want to keep playing. I don't I know. I, I, I kind of I kind of in a way I wish that they hadn't gone with this facial recognition technology for mm. the animation because I f- it feels very distracting at times. Mm. It it. I, I'm one of those guys where I play a game and I expect an immersive experience. You know, um, playing games like Red Dead Redemption or, or, or Fallout New Vegas, if there is a glitch, it pulls me out of the experience because it's like watching a movie and seeing a boom mic fall in shot or seeing mm. a teamster in the back eating a sandwich. You know, that's what mm. that feels like. So, so much of this technology in, in LA Noir, as fantastic as it looked, just pulled me out of the experience because I spent too much time, you know, spotting the seams and not enough time you know, reading the characters and, and, and just enjoying the tech for what it was. Yeah, so I, I guess going back and closing it out, uh, so um, do you ever find yourself going back and trying to glitch the system, the safe system, say they have a better experience, better results on what you I just went through? I think that one of the things about LA Noir is because the safe system is when you finish a level, mm. or when you finish a case, rather, and that's that's actually a very old-school way of handling uh, handling game saves. I mean, there are a lot of old platform games from the 90s um, in particular, I'm thinking about Earthworm Jim, the, the PC version, which saved your game at the end of every level. Mm. And if you didn't find like a hidden item or something tough, you know, you had to go back and start again. Oh, so you think it's more of a play I, like to old school I, I, saving method? Not- I, I wouldn't say that the choice was made um, to a, as a you know as, as kind of an homage to to old school save techniques. So I think it was done because it was easier for them to to do the you know you've reached a chapter here's a save yeah. point than it was to say well you can save it halfway through a case. And I think saving it yeah, halfway then they might have been that like maybe a sort of limitation. Yeah. And kind of like well hey we don't want to keep track of all this. Well um, the, the, the thing is we have everybody has a hard drive now. Yeah. At this point the, the yeah, reason the reason it did that before back in the day or like passwords at the end of levels or save at the end of levels is because there wasn't space mm. to like save well, all these different choices that you made. But now we have 250 gig hard drives and it's just like a computer. <laughs> what, what do you have? You have a 250 gig hard drive, don't you? My Thrixty? My, my my Maybe that's what we should call the 360 from now on. Thrixty. Just, you know, just shorten it. My mm. 360 has a uh, 120 gig hard drive. Okay. Mine had a 20 gig hard drive until I bought yours. Yes, you did. You bought another hard I had two hard drives. He does. Uh, so well, it's like 240 gigs. You know what doesn't need a hard drive, though? The Wii? No, on live. Oh, yeah. On live and yeah. uh, on live. <laughs> That's a nice You don't need a hard drive. You just need a cloud. You just need a. Very, very nice. You know, I had more to say about LA Noir, but let's rock on. Let's you, do it. You don't. We're, I, I think we're. What, what are we doing? We're going to schoolgirls though, or something. You're, you guys but are going to look at some schoolgirls. I'm. I'm staying home. I love schoolgirls. Something. We'll do something. Um. But well, yeah. But on live, did you guys hear about the whole Gaikai coop that I thought they they got for did, themselves did at you Walmart? Say coop? Yeah. You mean coup, right? They, or coup? Sorry. Did someone stage yeah. a coup of hey, on but live. W- hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. It's not his fault. But He's only been reading once. <laughs> yeah, for I know. Two years. Yeah, I did. But hey, look, I, hey, I did it. Hey, you I read did it. it. Let's tell us, it, about okay. it. tell us about well, it. Well, uh, guy, so Gaikai actually uh, teamed up. Well, do you know who Gaikai is? Actually, I, just that you mentioned Earthworm Jim, um, the guy Dave Perry, he's, that's his company now, mm-hmm. like Gaikai or whatever. It's like an on-live version, but instead of using an app or an, and, you know, a computer application or whatever it is, it's just through web browsers. Oh, and he actually just teamed up with Walmart.com, so it's like it's kind of interesting how they're doing it um, in that, the deal is they're going to have a lot of EA titles for now anyways. So it's like and then whenever they have a commercial order for Dead Space 2 or, you know, who knows, maybe Battlefield when that comes out, Walmart can say, play it now. You That's know, it, cool. it'll point you to their browser and you play the game through their browser and it works just like on live where you're kind of playing, playing it off site. You know, it's coming through servers yeah. and coming into your uh, Ooh, data connection. Tech. So, I mean... And on live, it has like the system now, and they're actually trying to. They're actually coming out with the iPad tablet thing. Yeah, I, I, hand, I, I hand saw that E3 them. this year. Yeah, it seems uh, really cool. I, uh, 
I wasn't impressed because of the way mm. they had the. I mean, uh, as far as I, I can understand it, you can actually reconfigure the controls on the screen. Mm. But the way that they had, I think they showed me Red Faction, and the way that they had the control set up was really unintuitive. Well, you didn't get the didn't get Universal the, Controller demo. They, no, they, they didn't show, show me that the Universal one. That's the cool demo. one. That, that's the really good one. Yeah. Yeah. I guess only the real journalists <laughs> get to. Uh, no, I had to. St- yeah, I had to like sneak in, but but <laughs> you snuck in to a trade to a press event at E3. I'm ashamed, hey, sir. Hey, I was trying to check it out. I thought it seems like cool tech. But anyways, you can actually have it's the same controller that the system has now, but it's universal. To, mm. It connects through Bluetooth or some other way, some some kind of magic, magic. magic. some kind it's of magic. magic. It's a magic controller. Yes, yeah, so it's going to connect to HTC's iPad and whatever else tablets are no, out they're there. They're going to do iPhones eventually too. It's like the possibility is there, but the screen's only that big, so yeah. it won't so work. Get, I game. think they're going to push it more as a tablet thing. You have to have like a headband with like a bit of plastic that comes down, and then you attach the three the the the, the, the iPhone to that bit of plastic, so you've got it like right there, so it looks like a bigger screen. You know, so it's just dangling, and every time That's you turn your head, it goes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's stupid. <laughs> you know. Well, what do you, what do you guys think of the whole cloud thing? I know you guys were trying it out right now, right? Well, so I was watching Nick you, try it out well, because he does. He's, he's very possessive of the control. He's like a he's like a stereotypical guy from the seventies with his TV remote. He's like, no, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you think? I guess from watching. I was really impressed. You know, I was impressed with the picture quality, the 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 latency. Like Nick was saying, there was virtually no lag between what he was, you know, pressing a button and, and it happening. You know, well, what kind of connection do you have? I think it all depends yeah. on the connection. We right? have a cable or connection. We have we have a um, uh, a twenty MB connection here from Time Warner. We're actually getting mm-hmm. twenty one, so we're getting uh, one MB faster than we're supposed to be getting. Is that amazing, Internet? If you download your stuff, it's, you, it's really amazing? Or It's pretty fast. Um, okay. I think I, would, I have like a 1.5 where I'm living now. It's, it's nasty. That's yeah. pretty good. It's faster, is it really? We want no. a faster connection <laughs> than the national average, which is kind oh, of okay. cool. So you guys were getting a good we're HD getting, feed oh and God, everything you connected fantastic. with HDMI really and everything? It, it was better than E3. Now, do you say there's a difference from, uh, say, playing it on there through on live, or would you play it on Gaikai uh, if it's through a browser? It's kind of the same technology, but I, they don't have an app, and I don't think they, th- their plan is just to partner up with different companies. Mm. So Walmart.com is one of these companies where they're like, oh, they made they had a partnership with EA, and they're gonna have EA games, uh, but it's just through your browser and just keyboard and mouse. Is I uh, I don't know. I kind of um, there's a stigma for me attached to playing games in a browser because I think of games in a browser I immediately think of anything Zynga have ever made in their you know their or entire Facebook career Facebook games you know Facebook like games that. and even you know even Quake Live I can't I can't play it because it just feels weird playing a game like that in the browser so if you if you were to see that doesn't support Google Chrome so if you were to see uh Say uh, Death, Dead Space Two playing on the browser, you, would um, you be interested in checking it out or trying it or playing it through that way? I don't know. I, it's, I think it's interesting. I think I would have to experience it first before I have any real opinions. But like I said, that 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 idea of playing games in a browser window. Whenever I hear the word browser window, gaming in a browser window, I immediately kind of go ugh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I, don't I think know. it's it's really interesting. Do you guys see it as a future? Of game. This is my argument on the side. If you guys see a lot of my articles, it's a lot of my arguments. Like to me, this this seems like the future, especially for me that I'm actually not at home as much as I would like to, mm. so I can't really be around my consoles. And the fact that they're gonna update uh, the iPad to have universal controls, like I can play Assassin's Creed or Deus Ex: Human Revolution on the go. You know, well, why would you want to play really... Deus Ex Three? I mean, that I, I didn't. <laughs> well, besides it. the point, I'm, besides I'm the point mo- of I'm how gonna, good I'm it I'm actually moaning. is, or not. I'm moaning. I'm, I do too much moaning. But you know, I think I think it's definitely it's, it's an interesting. There's, there's mm. a lot of interesting implications. Not just like you said, the advertising thing. Where's you know, buy Dead Space Three here and try it if you like uh, mm. on, in your browser. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. I think that's 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 very interesting. I think that cloud gaming. Um, I think the industry is going to be very resistant to cloud gaming because at the end of the day, publishers still want to push product. Yeah. You know, they want they yeah, want stuff on the but, shelf. But the, the thing with that is, uh, when you do buy cloud gaming, they don't have all the costs of actually making yeah. a product. That's why the uh, indie developers yeah, the where, where they content. do the things where you can just download it straight from their website, where they don't even put it through Steam or any iTunes. Or I, I, they well, get I think all the, the money. I think the issue is going to be yeah. From the, the more it, more of the issue, I think will be because it's more of a service. Instead of yeah. individually selling a product, so it's kind of be like on live. I'm not sure is it's like ten dollars a month well, or whatever plan they have, but they, it's a serv- they, It's like a Netflix for things. gaming. They have the the ten dollars a month where you can play sixty games. They have sixty games, and they add more like every couple weeks or so to that. 
and they also have the the play pack or the play pass where you can basically buy a license for fifty bucks or whatever mm-hmm. to play the new game that came out. Okay, so I mean, it, it is probably better than a serve, uh, you know, like a Netflix because it is by it's a solid card. You pick whatever you want to play, and you just well, there's like play the rest. sixty games you can play as much as you want. And it's kind of like Netflix. I, I think streaming, the, bi- the big, I think the biggest issue is just the content. You know, it's the content that they gotta push more content. People actually want, and they'll be like, "Well, okay, I'll play it on my tablet. I'll play it whenever." And it's cloud savings, so you can come home, play it on your HD TV, or take it on the go, and still make progress. And it's all saving in the cloud, yeah. so you can go back and forth that way. But there, but, there is that thing like. When you buy a game on uh, Good Old Games or something, and then say Good Old Games shuts down, all the money you spend yeah. is gone. Like when you buy a yeah. uh, Mario World on Super Nintendo, you still have that, and you can play it forever. So, but if on live crashes or the I- internet explodes, <laughs> then you don't get yeah. it, your, your games are gone. Uh, and what so do you do? What do you do with that little box that you paid, you know, no dollars for, Nick? That they gave <laughs> you a free. I, I will throw it through a window of a game store and then pick up my uh, Super Nintendo games. Awesome. Very well done. <laughs> I, I, I don't think it will actually break through a window. That micro I mean, that, that is, is, uh, that, that is not, it's right not a rock. It would just explode. <laughs> and it would be out in the couch. I, yeah, I think that's the, that's the biggest problem, probably. That, that, that whole, like, it's not tangible. You're not getting the product. You can't, 10 years from now, just hook up your NES and, and just start playing Super Mario Brothers or whatever it is. But, it's kind you know, of... The, 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 the you know, but I mean, the trade-off, I don't know. I think the trade-off, to me, at, is worth it. You know, I don't know. See, on, on the I, other I, hand, I people know. didn't really think anyone would ever download games now. Yeah. And now there's, like... Like Braid and Limbo, things like that. They're like, oh, there's real games that we can download, mm-hmm. and we never see physical releases, and they're still just great. Yeah, just as good. Yeah, I mean, uh, what well, was Limbo the last? Limbo saw a physical release. <coughs> by by oh, way oh, yeah. of like a three pack. Yeah, uh, they, they bundled system. it with trials. But yeah, there, and, and there's there's else. really really good games. I mean, one of the, one of the funnest games I played last year. Fun is the word. I hope right. Yeah, like, one, of fun. Fun. one of the most fun. One of the most fun games. Is a word. There you go. Funner fun isn't a word. Okay. Funnest fun then. I, I, last year. I disapprove. As the Englishman in this chat, I disapprove. <laughs> We're well, last year, one of the most, well, last American. year, one of the most fun games I played was the, you know, Tim, Tim Burton, no, not Tim, Tim Burton, Tim Schafer's uh, Tim game, co- uh, cos- what was it, Costume Quest? Costume Quest. That was, a, that was an incredible game. And it's a three, like, three-hour game where you just sit down, play through it real quick. And actually, it's a three-hour game and collecting everything, getting all the achievements and everything, like, it's a gamer's game, and at the same time, you get a cool little story, what, different, yeah. what, what do, unique what do, graphics. What do you mean, gamer's game? What's a gamer's I, game? I in hate that, that term. <laughs> gamer's game, as far as like it's just collect. There's a collectibles. There's uh, achievements. There's like. I think you know, I, I played it, the demo of stacking, and stacking seems to have a lot of similar elements. Mm-hmm. You stacking know, was that, cute. Stacking and, and, was, oh, was was interesting. Adorable. Right? I haven't bought it, but you know, when I when I have the monies, I fully intend to. No, and uh, trench came out too. Which yeah. one? What trenched was their next game? Uh, from, from the, yeah, it's, it's they have like another like game. Six months, isn't it? Yeah, which took them. You know, usually we'd have to wait what three years for Brutal Legend and Brutal Legend. <laughs> Brutal Legend was 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 iffy because they were trying to sell us one game and they gave us an, a completely different title. Yeah, as much as you know, Tim. I, th- I think that happens a lot, but who, I think that have. I think that happens a lot, but I think it happens more in like you know. They actually, ju- the 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 Brutal Legend RTS dispute they actually joke about that in the commentary for mm. monkey island 2 special edition well i, I anyway. think i think <laughs> i think what happens is they have the actual game people working on the game know exactly what they're trying to do it's just the marketing yeah like in, in that case i think it was more of like let's not tell them it's an rts or an rts light well, it's the fact that whatever it's whatever RTS, kind of games. Console, rts games are a tough sell as it is but they they traditionally have never sold well on games consoles with the exception mm. of halo wars because everyone's like oh halo yeah. And uh, it, it didn't. They didn't matter what sort of game it was. They, it just mattered that they had the the, Halo the brand. Of yeah, if they put out a, a Call of Duty RTS, Call I don't get. Wars. I don't doubt that, that that game would be you know top of the top of the sales charts if they put what, that out. That'd be cool if Call of Duty Call of Duty Wars actually came out and it made people like remember that PC is like a real thing. And people were like, oh, let's play on PCs again. This will be great. And then everybody goes back to the 2012. Computers. The Xbox 360 Gold memberships. Tumble away at an alarming rate. Windows Live. Wait, you guys are making pre- you guys are making predictions now. Or? No, oh god, no. Only if I mean, if Call of Duty, if they could put out a Call of Duty RTS, I think that would be that would be interesting. I think it would sell well, but I still think that the RTS genre would would have difficulties. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the uh, 
Devil May Cry is another example of that, where they they, they marketed one game and gave us another because it's like I, I sometimes think that that Devil May Cry was a huge practical joke on on game journalists. Wait, the original, Devil the original, May Cry? yeah. How did, how did they how did they well, play it, that? One? It's it's a, it's an interesting kind of um, would you say brawler? Is brawler the right word for, for that game? Beat em, beat em, it's kind of a beat 'em up. Kind of well, it's, it's a survival entered. horror, but you're awesome. Yeah, it's, it's Resident Evil if you didn't suck well, as a human. Well, that yeah. game came about as a result of you know early alpha builds of of Resident Evil. Yeah, 4. yeah. One of those became of it, yeah. uh, one of those became Devil May Cry. But you get to like the last like quarter or last fifth of the game, and it metamorphs into like this weird kind of shoot 'em up, and they do all these other weird things with it. And I kind of wonder, did they did they just get to the end of the game and just forget what type of game they were making? I don't, I don't remember there being such a change they just, in that they game. Ch- totally it's, it, it was always kind of like a mix of, yeah. you use your guns, use your weapons, use but your at, sword to kind of mix it, it up. Kind of like the last boss, it did have kind of a uh, it went like the new the, Yara's Revenge thing with like the yeah. 3D shooter thing, but it's you like, know they did that with Kingdom Hearts too. Yeah, It reminds me, there was an old game for, um, uh, for a bunch of systems, including the Amiga CD32 and the Sega CD uh, that Cygnosis put out called Microcosm where you play a little ship. It's basically inner space of the video game, where you play a little ship going through like someone's blood vessels and arteries, shooting germs. And it sounds rubbish, but it was really cool. <laughs> mm. But the the last parts, or the, the later parts of Devil May Cry, reminded me very much of that game. And mm. I I, I kind of wonder. They the, the two reasons that that may have happened was either a they wanted to change it up because they realized their game was incredibly dull, and it was. I didn't like Devil May Cry. You I thought, suck. Yeah, I thought that oh, game was Devil really good, especially awesome. especially yeah. the time. even going back especially to it. To even going Evil. back to it is still pretty well, good. But I'm, at the maybe time. I need to give it a second chance, but at the time, I, I you know, at the time, maybe I was, you need to play it. I, <laughs> I played it. You know what? I think at the time, this was before I got my own PlayStation Two, and I was very kind of anti Sony at this point. Were you a Dreamcaster? So he played the I, Amiga. I wasn't even a. I wasn't even a drink. I wasn't even a Dreamcast guy at this time. I just, I just wasn't sold on the PS Two yet, and mm-hmm. Devil May Cry didn't help. It wasn't until actually Grand Theft Auto Three and Silent Hill Two when I finally got to play those. Those were like the games that made mm-hmm. me, you know, want to get a PS Two. Yeah. But, but Devil May Cry, uh, it, it, like I say, it was either they forgot what type of game they were making, or they just like took a bunch of pills. And just went, you know what? Let's just throw whatever yeah. in there at the end of this I game. I don't know. I don't know. I, re- I remember that game being pretty consistent, but who knows? It, it, Maybe I'm wrong. As I think well. I, I think know. you're 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 the wrongest wrong <laughs> that ever wronged. <laughs> But yeah, it, it, it yeah. feels like, again, at the end of that game, it feels like it was a practical joke played on game journalists. It's mm-hmm. like, well, if you don't comment on this bit, clearly you didn't play it that far. Maybe. I don't yeah, know, but would they would they really spend the resources on trying to uh, um, get a journalist caught up it that was way? Only, it was only a six-hour game. I don't know. Conversations yeah. I've had with some developers, I can see them wanting to pull practical jokes on the gaming press because... But it's an expensive practical it's, joke. It's though. an expensive I mean, it, it, joke, it's sure. like it is. I, 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 when I say that, I say that kind of. They can do whatever they like, want. Yeah. When I when I say it, like it could have been a practical joke, I say that kind of half in jest because mm. it. You know, if anyone doesn't comment on that part of the game in their reviews, then they probably didn't finish the game. And therein lies, you know, there lies a problem. Can you review a product? And this is a dispute that, that, that that's gone on since you know the the, the dawn of, of gaming journalism mm-hmm. is do you have to finish game in order to adequately review it? And my personal opinion is, if it's a game with a narrative that, that, that has a start, a middle, and an end, then yes, I think you need to play it from, you know, from, from start to finish. And I think Devil May Cry is a key example of that. You know, if, if any reviewer um, play, you know, played part of that game and then reviewed it and then n- neglects entirely to mention the fact that it changes itself up for the last you know, quarter or so of the game, uh, then, then that's kind of indicative of, of uh, game journalists not doing their job properly. And then, and that's just the tease, actually. So we're, we'll be back. We're gonna take a break, <laughs> and we actually, yeah, we'll get back into this conversation. Some something like the games journalism, right? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> it's not like right, I we'll know anything right about back. that, but sure. Okay, we'll yeah, be right back to the break.
we're back on the game feed weekly and um actually yeah we're kind of short on time so should we tell them that do they care the listeners care uh, they're not maybe, listening i don't know maybe maybe not the listeners aren't even listening hey there's You're a couple there's a couple people singular. listening and we're on itunes now so that's hello kind of cool. itunes that's, yeah. you've Can given you a, you've expanded the number of people who are not going to listen to you by putting yourselves up on itunes we have a much and, bigger uh, potential audience now Yes, potential audience. Potentially, it's just it's just a fancy <laughs> way of saying people who want to listen. So I, to since we uh, actually have they Ben uh, Patton on the podcast this week, Patton, we on the podcast. Patton, Patton right? That Patton? That's me. That's yeah, Patton. It's two yeah, days. there you go. <laughs> um, so since we got him on, he's actually a kind of a controversial figure oh, in the God. gaming scene. Is that is that fair to say? Or? Uh, I don't think it would be unfair to describe me as controversial. <laughs> I, it's not a word I would use, but mm. eh, what would what word, word, word you use? I use a word I'm not allowed to say on a family friendly podcast. <laughs> He's a camel. Th- and and you can't use another word to replace that one. No. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's less fun that way. Ray Gutierrez so, had a word for you. So him. um what what you do on the site, what is it that you do on the site that you started? Basically, Maybe- uh I spend too much time too much of my free time that could be spent doing other things like, you know, looking for work. Um <laughs> <laughs> I spend that uh, reading gaming blogs and mm. looking at their factual inconsistencies when they've, uh, you know, basically gotten something wrong or they posted rumors fact or failed to do their research mm. or posted something just stupid, just so, so stupid. So would you and see yourself in the kind of watchdog? Oh. Uh, kind pe- of people have position? people have described me as a watchdog or an ombudsman, and mm. I don't, you know, I don't. I'm not doing this. Uh, for any particular reason other than I'm amused by doing it, you know, I'm not... I thought you were doing it because so, you wanted to make it better. It's kind of both. You know, if, if if things improve because of, you know, my blogging, then fair enough. But I've really realized, um, really realized, in fact, <gasps> really? Uh, since January, that the, the key motivator for me doing this blog is because... Um, it amuses me to do so, and mm-hmm. really, it's the only way for me to stay so, sane. Reading the gaming s- blogs like Kotaku and Destructoid and VG Charts, mm-hmm. <laughs> you what? know, reading the, the quality of the stuff that's out Ed- there. Edit mm-hmm. that out. No, there's no editing. I think we're all in the same in the same pond. You know, it's all like I think gaming can get better, and you I, know, I, I think the journalism and, and has writing. to get better. And I think the key problem is that you know there was a time when game journalists were um, s- separate from the system. You know, they they would comment on 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 the system and the the industry of games, and now more and Wait, more. But you, so you you said it amuses you, but you do kind of maybe in the back of the head, honestly, have maybe a grander scheme, and hopefully I, I it does. I'm I'm a dog it. chasing cars, you know. <laughs> you know, one day the video game industry is just going to all get better. There will be no problems. We'll all be professionals, and you'll be out of another job you don't have. Exactly, and everyone will thank me for it. <laughs> Do yeah. you do you have have you made many enemies in the oh, industry God. for it? Uh, I've made I've made a number of friends on a number of enemies. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say most of the enemies I've made have been part of the gaming press. A lot mm-hmm. of the friends I've made have been part of the gaming press, and I've also made friends, you know, within developers and publishers and so on. I've got mm-hmm. contacts at a number of places who have, you know, been incredibly supportive of. Of, uh, of whatever you yeah. have planned yeah. or whatever you, know, you are doing. I don't, and I don't. I wouldn't say I have anything planned. I just I see stuff and I comment on it, and mm-hmm. I try to comment on why I'm commenting on it. You know, if I see something that is factually inaccurate, I'll say this is inaccurate because, mm-hmm. as as an example of that, a couple of days, I think it was either yesterday or the day before, Brian Ashcraft of Kotaku um, commented on a story in Japan. Of course, it was in Japan. It was Brian Ashcraft who wrote mm-hmm. it. Um, of there were three teenage boys, three separate teenage boys, all aged about between fifteen and nineteen, who had posted threats on the internet via mm. like you know one kid did it via his ps3 and another kid did it via his dsi like one kid said oh, i'm gonna blow up a train station and the other one said i'm gonna go on a stabbing spree in a train station mm. and they believed because they'd made these posts from their games consoles that they couldn't be traced mm-hmm. um so because these three kids all all did the same thing for the the same reason with the same core belief bashcroft then posted that there seems to be a belief in japan that if you make a post from a games console, it can't be traced. He mm-hmm. he took the the actions of three teenage three teenage boys in Japan and extrapolated from that an entire nation of people, all of whom believe. And that's not that's not that's n- in no way factual, you know. And and I wrote that I wrote about that on my blog. And at the time, I don't feel this now, but at the time when I was writing, I kind of thought actually this is you know he's he's basing the actions of three Japanese teenagers. He, he, he's using that as a basis for the beliefs of an entire structure and uh, an entire race of people and I think that is a little bit racist I think I've, I, 
that's you know yeah, you, you took it to that yeah i took it to, to that, that point to that and, and now I've, you know since i've had time to think about it you know i don't necessarily think i think you know it, is, it was probably slightly out of line for me to assume that everyone in japan is japanese when you know ashcroft himself lives there you know he and he's not japanese have you ever done any redactions or rethoughts oh, or, all the or time. written again like maybe i got it wrong or maybe i thought of it in a certain way that you know framed in a certain if way. i make a mistake i apologize for it mm-hmm. you know um i i've been i, I up until I think maybe last month or the month before, I was picking on. Let me do that again without popping the pee. I was <laughs> picking on um, a VG twenty four seven writer, Johnny Cullen, um, oh. who he's not the best writer in the world, and he's like nineteen years old, uh, and he's a writer at what mm-hmm. is becoming one of the most prominent uh, gaming news sites in in the UK. And yeah, VG twenty four seven. Yeah, over like maybe the yeah. last year, last couple they've of really years, they've grown. Been, they've been, and yeah, I've been very impressed with the growth, but I'm not impressed with the, you know the the one thing that that, that VG twenty four seven is very good at is picking up on a story and just writing about it quickly mm-hmm. and getting it out there, which is good. That's the kind of thing that Kotaku used to do, that, but doesn't do that that much anymore. Mm-hmm. But what they're not good at is is fact checking. Uh, making sure they haven't posted the story already within the last 24 or 48 hours, uh, or even within the last six months, because sometimes they'll pick up a story and run with it, even though they'd already posted exactly the same thing six months ago. They're very good at that, but they're not very... It's not uh, Johnny Cullen can't write. He is a he's a terrible writer, and he will get better because you know he's only in his he's, you know he's like mm-hmm. eighteen nineteen years old. I don't know how old he is, but right now he's an awful writer, and he and and he refuses to acknowledge that. So I kind of um, because he started picking on me on Twitter, he started calling me names. I thought right, well he's fair. So game are you just now. picking fights when people pick fights on no, you? No, oh, this is the thing. Is usually I'm I'm you know usually I'm better than this, and in the, on this occasion I will acknowledge I I I uh, I was weak. Mm. And I started to target him, and I would read his posts and look for stuff to write about. And I got it got to a point where he posted something, and I I I, I called him a slew of names, and then uh, apologized for it a couple um. of days later. I posted an apology. I emailed him an apology because you know usually if I make a mistake, if I if I you know ball something up, I will I'll post an apology and a correction on the website, and I will also email an apology to the person I've slighted mm. because you know, Jonathan Holmes and I had uh, had a conversation last year where. Um, he he posted a video of him at E3, kind of holding onto and clinging onto uh, a. Uh, uh <laughs> he posted a video of him kind of holding onto a booth a booth babe and keeping her close, um, and just kind of you know it seemed like it was against her will, and I re- you know that that caused huge problems for me. It caused huge problems for. Um, you know, for other people who who uh, found it to be quite disgusting, and he, he and I have spoken since about the about the situation and other situations like it, where he's kind of perved on women. Um, so I, I've noticed you've actually already dropped some really <laughs> specific specific yeah. names and tar- how do you determine like. Do you base it on maybe like the popularity of a site, and you're like these guys should be better, or how do you determine who you oh, target I, or, I or really... who who you speak hmm. speak on? I don't know. I think um, I have I have on my RSS reader. I have I have three groups. I have gaming sites, gaming sites I actually want to read, and gaming sites colon usual suspects. Usual suspects <laughs> are the sites that. Okay have uh, popped up more often than not so if i'm having a quick day if i don't have time to go through my entire feed it makes sense to just go so, through the usual so suspects. you do have an elaborate or semi-elaborate process that I, you oh, go through before you it's, actually it, it's not like you just see a random tweet or this is popular or anything like that you actually have it's it's very methodical i i have i have a process <laughs> i go through I, I i read you know my rss feed in the morning all the gaming sites i'm subscribed to there's sometimes hundreds of posts mm. and i will go through each one and just skim them <laughs> Um, and then you know so there's stuff that I miss as well because I am just skimming stuff where I'm just mm-hmm. looking at headlines and I'll get people emailing me tips and stuff. And uh, as, as oh, ex- you ha- you do have a stream of people actually oh, like look at this. This is the, this is so <laughs> wrong in so many levels. The or... Brian Ashcroft thing that I mentioned um, about Japan, I had 87 emails about that one post. Mm-hmm. 87. That's a record for me. Uh, was it that one or was it the? Uh, yeah, it was the- no, that was the oh no, no the, the the one that I got eighty seven emails about was um, Kotaku now has this weekly feature called What is America's Fetish This Week or it mm. rotates with another feature called What is Japan's Fetish This Week mm. and this week they did and I don't know whether you're going to need to edit this out they did a feature <laughs> what, the, 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 the headline feel was, free I guess to the headline speak. was, was What is Kotaku. America's yeah What is America's Fetish This Week Penises and he wrote an article about penises on Kotaku the mm. Gamer's Guide and I got eighty seven emails about that one post 
Uh, even, so, uh, even, so, even the headline picture was a guy with a, like penis glasses. Yeah. So, so you are a man with an agenda in a way. So an is, agenda? That fair to, is that fair to say? <gasps> an agenda in dun, a way that's like, dun, if, <laughs> is it an agenda where it's uh, you are trying to make it better, or it's kind of like, but you say it. So you're saying that it's for you to amuse yourself, but at the same time you are also trying to. It's, Make it better by pointing it out, and then like like me, we mentioned before, a watchdog type of yeah. thing. For me, it's kind of a form of trench humor because if I don't have this, if I'm not commenting on this stuff in this way, then I basically I'm not going to read the gaming gaming news sites at all. I'm not going to find out what's going on in the industry. But mm-hmm. if I if I read the sites without you know voicing my opinion on what they're doing wrong. I'm going to go a little bit mad because it is it is appalling. The, the standards in 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 in, the, in in gaming journalism are mm-hmm. appallingly low, even on VG charts. You know mm-hmm. there are there are problems with VG even charts. Even on VG charts, even what? especially on VG <laughs> charts. Edit this out. VG yeah, charts. <laughs> You, you guys are going to get Turn sacked for having this, me on this show. This this is quite possible. Well, actually, older. you know what? I do want to mention, though. I do want to mention. I think. I hope. I hope it's okay. I don't know with the with the higher ups, but there is. Uh, I don't know. There's. There's a kind of a new philosophy going on with the site, and I think there has been some acknowledgement of the quality of what's been written on the site, and the hope that it will. I, I get better. Well hope so. But yeah, and you know, so I mean, it, we're all, like I said before, we're all kind of in the same pond, and yeah. we're all kind of like. I don't know. Maybe there is something somebody should be watching what other people are doing. But I don't know. I've also heard maybe I don't know. Have you seen maybe a trend like at first people were like, "Did you ever see like huge support?" Or right from the start, you kind of saw hate and support um, both ways. Or have you noticed like less people supporting you over time, or more people supporting you over time? Right or? at the start, I didn't notice anything because I did the blog for like two, three months before. How long has it? How long has it been? It up started, at this point? and I, uh, I discovered this relatively recently. The, the blog launched in February of last year. Oh, so um, only for a year, and you've already been. Yeah, making ripples across. Yeah. I remember following you, following you on Twitter when you had 140 followers. That was the, the, those were the days, lad. You know, that was. Uh, it wasn't until kind of April, May when when the site blew up, and I got a combination of praise and condemnation from. There, there was one person. I think it might have been Tyler Wild from Games Radar, but another name. I, I'm not entirely sure it was him, and as far as I'm concerned, it wasn't him. But I think it might have been. Uh, but he I set up a counter. Like, no, it's in. It's in. It's in. <laughs> he set up a counter Tumblr because my blog is hosted on Tumblr. That's how mm-hmm. I that's how I blog. He set up a counter Tumblr, and every time I made a post, he would make a post pointing out how I'm an idiot. Mm-hmm. And he kept that up for about six hours and then gave up. <laughs> um, but I get I get emails, I get uh, hate messages on on Twitter and Tumblr, mm-hmm. and and but I also get a, a lot of you know keep it ups, and I get well, a lot of praise you're and, the and only, tips. And you're the only one that actually calls this out. Because I you're, say you're, well, you're not really connected with other gamer journalists because they'd be like, "Oh, look at this guy did this thing and it's stupid," and they're like, "You're stupid. Look at your posts." But you, you're just some random just British so- guy for, that doesn't have a job and has nothing better to and, do. And this is this is the key thing: is people always say to me, "Well, if you don't like it, why don't you launch your own damn site?" And my response to that is, "Well, I think that's PG. There's, there's a might be PG. It, c- continue, continue yeah. your that's, thought. That's continue. PG. Better you launch your own PG, gosh darn right. site." Uh, and and, and my response to that is, "Well, I shouldn't have to. You know, I'm I'm not a, I'm not a game journalist. I don't aspire to write about games for a living." I am a reader. I want to read about what's going on in the industry. I want to be entertained while I do it. And I would very much like it if you, you know, stopped taking teeny tiny morsels of rumor and then inflating them into nothing. Hmm. You know, I, 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 I ex- dude, that's how so you, you don't, you, so you don't have <laughs> any aspirations to be as part of the media. I've been asked. I've been industry. asked. I've actually been asked. Would you like to come and write for our website? And mm. I've, I've said no, or I've ignored them. Mm. You know, I, I was approached by a website after E3 last year, and they said, we like your feature, we'd like you to run on our website. And I sat and I talked to them, and it all sounded very interesting. And, and then I just let it go, because I don't I don't want to be a part of this industry. I've kind of become... Well, as it is, <laughs> or ever. I don't... As, I, as, it, as it is right now. As it is right now, I think there are problems. I think, mm. Obviously, I think there are problems, otherwise I wouldn't have the blog in the first place. Mm. Um, I don't know if things are ever going to improve, and I don't think things are ever going to reach a point where I think, yeah, maybe I do want to write about games. The closest I've got to writing about games is I, I occasionally had a column. There was an old website called GamePartisan.com, which doesn't exist anymore now, and I used to contribute editorials to them because the writer, the, the, the editor-in-chief there um, liked my writing. And I was a teenager, and it was like, hey, I get to pay to write, so I'll mm-hmm. go for it. Um, and then a bunch of friends of mine in 2005 or 2006 launched a small gaming website just for fun, uh, f- 
with no real agenda. We just wanted to, you know, have a go. And I, I wrote, again, I wrote editorials and a couple of news posts for that. Um, mm. And when that, you know, I, I quietly stepped away from that. And when it died a death, I, I, you know, I didn't shed a tear. You know, <laughs> mm. uh, I, I don't have any. So what, what would you, what would you say if you were in the media and say there was somebody who picked your post out and like it's very inaccurate or, or are you saying you're infallible or oh, you God, would never I'm, make I'm a no, mistake I make or? mistakes no, all the he time sucks. <laughs> I make mistakes all the time I, I point out mm. my own mistakes and I apologize for them if my mistakes are particularly stupid I will actually point yeah, I will actually make a post about myself on the blog not just mm. an apology but I will say look how stupid I've been in the same way that I would say, look how stupid Brian Ashcroft has been, or look how stupid Jim Sterling has he's, been. He's going to say that about this podcast. He's like, look how stupid I've been. <laughs> why, why did I do this? Why why did I, I and, and link to it. And I, I highly it. suspect you're going to get an email from, from the higher-ups in VG Charts saying, please, please don't have him on the show again. <laughs> He's, he's, we well, can't even understand him. What language is he yeah, speaking? What, what, where did I'm he come from? I'm from England, and I don't even understand well, what he's Well, I saying. mean, you know, uh, Ben, thank you for... Uh, being on the show this no week, problem. actually, uh, thanks for your candidness. Who knows? Like, who knows what the reaction will be? But uh, should be interesting. We need to tweet at everyone he mentioned. He name dropped. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody you name drop. <laughs> hey, here's Ben talking about you, you know, yet again. The here's stuff, our disclaimer. The stuff with. Uh, it was so convenient for you to live here for me. Like, who's this guy? Yeah, I know, John. <laughs> did you, did you? Okay, <laughs> sorry. So Ben, so Ben Patton and your site is GameJournals.com, yeah. and it points you to uh, the other site you're doing, Game uh, Game Journalist. Are that, that is actually just GameJournals.com. Okay. If you go to GameJournals.com, that will take you to my my blog. And, and your Twitter is so people, you guys, they, and you're okay with getting the hate mail and the oh, love, I get it all the time. I'm used to okay. it. Yeah, it's What's just it's just Game Journals. Uh, journals being the start of journalists, but once mm-hmm. you get to the A, you just write OS and then you're done. Okay, <laughs> Nick, and then you don't, Nick. Thanks for being on the podcast again. And uh, it's, what's it's, the next I'm the co-host. What do you want from me? I'm going to be yeah. here all, all every right. day. There we go. Every and, day. Um, your host, I guess, again. Carlos Macias. Yes. And uh, we'll see you guys. I uh, appreciate your confidence we'll see in your you hosting guys. abilities. I, th- I think I'm the host. Where am I? <laughs> we'll uh, see you guys uh, next week. Peace. Peace. We're out. Who's that guy?